Before time began, there was the cube. We know not where it comes from, only that it holds the power to create worlds and fill them with life. That is how our race was born. For a time, we lived in harmony. But like all great power, some wanted it for good, others for evil. And so began the war. And just when all hope seemed lost, message of a new discovery. Avi Lipkin is here from Israel, and he's brought his brand new book. It's called Return to Mecca. And the title of this book, Return to Mecca, what, what could that possibly mean? And, and on the cover is a picture of a black cube. That's where the story starts. Avi, let's, let's start right there. Yes. Um, <clears throat> I believe that the Bible is a GPS. Uh, I believe that the Bible uh, took place, a lot of it took place in Arabia. Actually, in most churches, Christians say to me, we know that Mount Sinai, the real Mount Sinai, is not in the Sinai Peninsula, but rather in northwest Saudi Arabia. It's called Jebel al uh, I am the first Jew in the Jewish world who's coming to the rabbis and saying, the Torah is a GPS. Uh, Jethro, the high priest of Midian, I believe was the high priest of the Kaaba, the black stone, which is today in Mecca. There was no Mecca. It was just a black stone in those days. Our father's Jethro. He's Sheik of Midian. Uh, Moses was the son-in-law of Jethro. Moses was the understudy of Jethro for 40 years. And when Moses went to take the children of Israel out of slavery, he gave them the phylacteries, which they are to put on their forehead and on their left arm, as a sign from God that we are leaving the pyramid system of slavery in Egypt and we're going to the cube system of freedom in Arabia. And it must be remembered that there was no Judaism in those days, there was no Christianity, there was no Islam. All people, including the Israelite slaves, were pagans. And of course, the golden calf, basically the children of Israel reverted to the gods that they had known in Egypt yes. when Moses delayed coming back. So the purpose of this book is to show where exactly we were, and that 38 years, at least, of the uh, Exodus was in Arabia. Uh, Moses, Aaron, Jethro were at the Kaaba, which is today Mecca. And when God says in Deuteronomy 11 that the borders of Israel will include the desert to the south, that desert is Arabia. <laughs> Jethro was uh, a cousin because Jethro is descended from Midian. Uh, Midian was one of the brothers of, of Isaac. So you have uh, Ishmael, son of Hagar, and then you have the children of Keturah. So Midian is one of the children of Keturah. And uh, from Midian, you go down to the next generation, which is Reuel or Raguel. And one of the names of uh, Jethro in the Bible is Reuel. So he was probably, in the Middle East, many times people are named after grandfathers and great-grandfathers. You have come far from Egypt, across the desert, on foot. He who has no name surely guided you steps. No name. You Bedouins know the God of Abraham? Abraham is the father of many nations. We are the children of Ishmael, his firstborn. We are the obedient of God. I, I will, will dwell, dwell in this land. So Moses, when he had to flee Egypt after he killed the, the taskmaster who was beating the Jewish slave, the Israelite slave, he knew where he was going. He knew the geography. He was almost Pharaoh, so he had to know the geography. So he took the Israelites through the desert to what is today Nueva, on the eastern shore of the Red Sea of uh, uh, Sinai. That is where they crossed. And this, by the way, there's no archaeological proof at all yeah. of an exodus in the Sinai Peninsula. The, but there is tons of archaeological proof in the Arabian Peninsula, the New Testament. Uh, chapter 4, verse 25 of Galatians, it says, you know, that Mount Sinai and Hagar, which are in Arabia. Josephus speaks very clearly 
that uh, Sinai, uh, the, the Ishmaelites are there, the Troglodytes are there, uh, the children of Keturah are there, the children of Esau are there. Everybody is there, and they're all one family. And talk about the linkage between the, the Jews who wear phylacteries and this pilgrimage to Mecca. By the way, if Christians have ever come to Israel, so I'm talking now to the people who've been to Israel, they've yes. seen it on the flight. Yes. Because when, when, <clears throat> when, when people are still snoozing and the sun comes up as the plane is approaching Israel, you see the Orthodox Jewish men go to the back of the plane and they pray, and they put on the phylacteries. And this is a tradition that goes back 3,500 years. Uh, by the way, it, very important, and I learned this in the Jewish Theological Seminary, we studied the New Testament. Matthew 23, verse 5. Jesus is criticizing the Pharisees, and he says, For all their, their works they do to be seen of men. They make broad their phylacteries, and they enlarge the hems of their garments, or the tzitzit on their prayer shawls. And it's, it's interesting, indeed, that today there are three types of phylactery. You have the size A, the size B, and the size C. And okay. so what Jesus was saying was, he wasn't saying don't put on the phylacteries, which I'm sure Jesus did. Uh, what he was saying was that if you have the $200 phylactery, and you have the $400 phylactery, and you have the $600 phylactery, which is humongous, don't spend your money on $600 phylactery. Spend it on the 200 and give the 400 to charity to feed the poor. So, but it's something, it's in Matthew 23, verse 5. So we know that Jewish men in those days wore this. We know that in the Greek Orthodox Christian tradition, there are priests who put on phylacteries. It's a slightly different Greek phylactery, but it all commemorates exactly the same thing. So the phylacteries have a very important meaning for Christians as well. So my question, and I'll ask it for everybody who's watching, why in the world would you put on, uh, strap a little wooden box with the scriptures from Deuteronomy on the inside and attach that to your left arm and to your forehead. Why would, why would you do that and why would it be cube-shaped? Cube Perfectly cube-shaped. And so the contention in my book is that when Moses came to Pharaoh, and Ph remember Pharaoh's God. Pharaoh was God in Egypt to the Egyptian people. He created the Nile and he created this and he created that. <laughs> And who's Moses? Moses is a guy who stutters. It's very hard to talk. And God says, give the people a sign. And the phylacteries were the sign. He gave Pharaoh the signs. You remember his rod became a, uh, a crocodile or serpent, ate the other crocodiles. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the, the leprosy in the chest. These are all signs. That, uh, and then later the ten plagues. Um, and Moses gave signs to the elders of Israel. And Moses gave signs to the people. You're talking about primitive pagan people who are shepherds. And they're saying to Moses, well, why should we listen to you? you know? And so, God, so this uh, phylactery has four pouches, four parchments. Uh, the first two are Exodus 13. Then you have Deuteronomy 6 and Deuteronomy 11. Exodus 13, we are still in Egypt. We are still in slavery. We're about to flee. But Exodus 13 talks about the, you know, sign on thy arm and frontlets between thine eyes. And, I, you know, I know young people won't know the word that I'm going to say now, but there's a word that older people like you and I remember, which is, you know, you know, gyroscope. A gyroscope takes us directly in the direction we have to go. And Moses is leading the children of Israel out of the pyramid triangular system to the cubic square system of freedom in the desert. And again, uh, Moses says to Pharaoh, let my people go so that they may circle me in the desert. The other five times, let my people go so that they may serve the Lord in the desert. But the first one is they should go around in circles. Now, Hajj is a pilgrim to Mecca. Hag is the Egyptian pronunciation. Hag in Hebrew means a holiday or going around in circles.
Hag in Hebrew means a holiday or going around in circles, or going around in circles. Or going around in circles, or going around in circles. And so the first meaning really meant, let my people go so that they may sacrifice to the Lord at the Kaaba in Mecca, which there was no Mecca at the time, which is the black stone. Jethro was the high priest. Moses was the understudy of the high priest. And so he knew why spiritually he was taking the children of Israel out of slavery from the pyramid system to the square system to Jethro. Then, of course, as you know, God finally says, no, you're not going to turn right. You're going to turn left. Instead of going to Mecca and Medina, we turn to the uh, Mount Sinai, Mount Chorev, which, as you said very correctly, is within sight of Elat and Aqaba and the Red Sea. And by the way, my people, forgive me for being arrogant, are the Jews and the Christians together. Uh, if the, now, my, my contention through my book is, if we Judeo-Christians get Mecca and Medina, then we capture the flag, and it is the termination of Allah, who I say is Satan, and sending the devil to the pits of hell for a thousand years. No, Moses. We cannot see his whole purpose. Even Ishmael did not know that God drove him into the desert to be the father of a nation. Did the little boy die in the desert, my father? No. God brought Ishmael and his mother Hagar into a good land. The same God who lived on the mountain? It may be, my son. Uh, Moses, Aaron, Jethro were at the Kaaba, which is today Mecca. Uh, 